What they are doing is using their wealth, especially the oil wealth of Venezuela, to bail out the poor. Here, it's the rich who are bailed out by taxpayers' money. In South America, it's the poor who are bailed out by the wealth which they regard as owned commonly by the people. I told Bush is a Marshall Plan, and he got angry. He said the Marshall Plan is a crazy idea of the Democrats. He said the best way to revitalize the economy is war, and that the United States has grown stronger because of war. War. All of the economic growth of the United States has been encouraged by the various wars. He said it very clearly. President Bush is well, he's only got six days, right? Yes. Thank God. <laughs> that was a former President Kirshner. And th these comments of President Bush, as he says about the United States growing strong through war, I don't think that's ever been reported anywhere. Well, it it's goes to the heart of the issue. And about your time in Vietnam uh, to one of your most well-known films, a clip of Platoon. I swear he doesn't know anything. He hates the NBA, but they come when they want and they just take the place. What's the f saying? Uh, I don't know. She's, uh, she's going on about the, why we kill the pigs, they're farmers, they got to make a living, all that kind of Crashed Vietnam, I mean, completely. We didn't even recognize it for so many years after the war. Our discretionary spending, they talk about the Tea Party people, they talk about education, cutting this, this. I don't get it. Why, if the majority of our discretionary spending is Pentagon, it's like a trillion dollars with the shadow budget in there, a trillion dollars a year, that's most of the, of the discretionary spending of this country. Why is it going to war? Why, if we're in such bad shape, why are we not taking care of ourselves? Why is, why is Obama embracing this? In that, in that sense, I think Bush was talking about the, how war yeah. forces the productive forces ahead and allows capitalism to continue to, to uh, exploit. Yeah, and yet we know what has been done to Iraq. A million have died. A million Iraqis have died since the occupation. But we don't really get a glimpse of them. So the enemy is dehumanized, or that they are all Muslims. And so it doesn't matter if we kill them. After all, they did 9-11. And all this rubbish that goes on endlessly to misinform the public, that's what we're seeing. Before you leave, Oliver Stone, I wanted to ask you about the sequel you've made to your hit, Wall Street. Ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. You mark my words. Will not only save Teldar paper, but that other malfunctioning corporation called the USA. Thank you very much. Now, though, 1971, John Kerry, the future senator and presidential candidate, testifying before Congress about the original Winter Soldier hearings. But they did. They relived the absolute horror of what this country, in a sense, made them do. Uh, they told the stories of times that they had personally raped, cut off ears, cut off heads, taped wires from portable telephones to human genitals and turned up the power, cut off limbs, blown up bodies, randomly shot at civilians, raised villages in a fashion reminiscent of Genghis Khan, shot cattle and dogs for fun, poisoned food stocks, and generally ravaged the countryside of South Vietnam, in addition to the normal ravage of war and the normal uh, and very particular ravaging which is done by the applied bombing power of this country. The fact that the crimes threaten it, not reds and not red coats, but the crimes which we're committing are what threaten it. And we have to speak out. The country doesn't know it yet, but it's created a monster. A monster in the form of millions of men who have been taught to deal and to trade in violence, and who are given the chance to die for the biggest nothing in history.
and Winter Soldier hearing. We're going to go back now, though, in time to February 1971 to the original Winter Soldier. First day I got to Vietnam, I landed in Da Nang Air Base, got off the plane and hitchhiked on Highway 1 to my new unit, to my unit. I was picked up by a truckload of grunt Marines with two company grade officers, first lieutenants. We were about five miles down the road where there were some Vietnamese children uh, at the gateway of the village, and they gave the old finger gesture, gesture at us. Uh, it was uh, understandable that they picked us up from the GIs there. They stopped the truck. Well, they didn't stop the truck. They slowed down a little bit, and it was just like response. The guys got up, including the lieutenants, and just blew all the kids away. There was about five or six kids blown away there, and then the truck just moved, uh, continued down the hill. That was my first day in Vietnam, in Quang Tri City. So I went with them, and uh, they didn't find any enemy, but they found a woman with bandages. So she was questioned with about, she was questioned by six Arvins, and the way they questioned her was since she had bandages, uh, they, sh they shot her. She was hit about 20 times. So after she was questioned, uh, of course dead, uh, this guy come over who was, and knowing him, uh, he was a former major. He was in the service for 20 years, and he, he got hungry again and came back over working with uh, USAID, <laughs> Aid International Development. And uh, he uh, went over there and ripped her clothes off and took a knife and cut from her vagina all the way up, well, just about up to her breast, and pulled her organs out completely out of her cavity and threw them out. And then he stopped and knelt over and uh, commenced to peel every bit of skin off her body and left her there as a, as a sign for something or other. That on Friday, Democracy Now! broadcast from Winter Soldier. This week, we play excerpts from the proceedings. We begin with John Michael Turner, who fought with the 3rd Battalion, 8th Marines. There's a term, uh, once a Marine, always a Marine, but there's also the term, eat the apple, F the core. I don't work for you no more. That was John Michael Turner stripping his medals and ribbons from his chest and throwing them into the audience to the applause of attendees at Winter Soldier. Turner then went on to describe some of his time in Iraq. On April 18th, 2006, I had my first confirmed kill. Uh, this man was innocent. I don't know his name. I called him the fat man. Um, he was walking back to his house, and I shot him in front of his friend and his father. The first round didn't kill him after I had hit him up here in his neck area. And afterwards, he started screaming and looked right into my eyes. So I looked at my friend who, was, who I was on post with, and I said, well, I can't let that happen. So I took another shot and took him out. He was then carried away by the rest of his family. It took seven people to carry his body away. There was one incident where we got into a firefight just south of the government center, about 2,000 meters. We had no idea where the fire was coming from, and the way our rules of engagement were, pinpoint where the fire is coming from and throw a rocket at it. So with that being said, we still didn't know where the fire was coming from, and an 84 millimeter rocket was shot into a house. I do not know if there was anyone in it. We do not know if that's where the fire was coming from, but that's what was done. This man right here was my third confirmed kill. As you can see, he was riding his bicycle. This, later on in the day, we went ahead and uh, we had CBS Laura Logan with us, but she was with the other squad. That was one man that wasn't taking, uh, that was taken care of in a very bad way. Because, because of all the, the wiring that he had, it would be considered an IED making material. Um, on my wrist, there's Arabic for FU. I got that put on my wrist just two weeks before we went to Iraq because that was my choking hand. And any time I felt the need to take out aggression, I would go ahead and use it. The reason I am doing this today is not only for myself and for the rest of society to hear, but it's for all those who can't be here to talk about the things that we went through, talk about the things that we did. With that being said, that is my testimony. 
I just want to say that I am sorry for the hate and destruction that I have inflicted on innocent people. And I'm sorry for the hate and destruction that others have inflicted on innocent people. At one point, it was okay. But reality has shown that is not, and that this is happening, and that until people hear about what is going on with this war, it will continue to happen and people will continue to die. I'm sorry for the things that I did. I am no longer the monster that I once was. Thank you. Former Marine John Michael Turner fought with the 3rd Battalion, 8th Marines. The videos and photos the soldiers showed can be seen at our website, democracynow.org. This is Democracy Now. We'll be back in a minute.